Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Jacob Van Etter. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Jacob. Hey, how we doing? Good. Thanks doing for coming good. on. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about you. What do you do? Uh, my official designation is a certified public accountant. I'm a CPA. It's a well-known designation in the nation uh, created a long time ago to protect the interests of investors um, for uh, from companies that would take advantage of manipulating the books to try and make uh, make things better than they look so investors would spend their money and uh, you know and oftentimes lose it so that's why the CPA designation was created but I kind of specialize in a different practice uh, more known to people as you know, tax preparation. I mm-hmm. uh, file taxes, and I don't interact with the practice that the CPA was created for so much, which is auditing. Um, I interact uh, more so with the IRS, which is another federal um, agency that everybody's aware of and everybody's trying to avoid. <laughs> um, but um, and and uh, I specialize in um, reducing people's tax burden. So like, okay. so go a little bit further than like TurboTax might, where you just enter your stuff and and but I specialize in navigating through the Internal Revenue Code and the various regulations and whatnot and familiarizing myself with what's going on so that I can help people reduce their tax burden. We call that a tax avoidance, which is very legal, a tax <laughs> evasion, which is not. Uh, the IRS okay. encourages tax <laughs> avoidance, which is sometimes a misnomer when we use it, when we see tax avoidance as a buzzword in the Wall Street Journal or whatever. Nope, that's very legal. Tax avoidance is really okay, encouraged. Tax evasion is what we're trying to. So we, we as professionals, um, balance that line. We try to get as close to as possible to the lowest tax bur- burden that we can, and uh, and carry our clients through that. So this so. is your busy time of year, then, right? We're ramping up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. February first is more or less the official start of tax season, mm-hmm. um, but we're getting ready. We're getting the software. We're doing all the conferences. We're doing year end, getting everybody ready to file those tax returns and and see all the work that we've done in preparation, you know, pan out. Yeah. And hopefully the IRS accepts our work and we get to move forward. You know, if not, then we start the whole process of chasing them down to prove we're right. You know, (laughs) so no, we have a good time with it, but yes, we're, we're getting ready. It's ramping up. Um, still, it's still kind of the slow season, but it's definitely coming to an end and everybody can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How long have you been in this business? I know it's a family business, right? How long have you been doing it? Personally, I have two years okay. um, put in as a tax accountant is what okay. my business card says. But I worked with my parents um, before I went to college to become a CPA and whatnot. And I was I did a couple seasons with them as a secretary and all the other odds and ends that uh, a family business needs to fulfill. There's yeah. always a need for something to be done. So, But yeah, so in total, I've probably put in somewhere close to four years, okay. um, but as a tax accountant, two years. That's nice. awesome. So how long has the business been uh, been around? So my dad has owned the business for 30 years or close oh, to wow. it. Okay. Um, and, but K&K Accounting, which is what Van Adderson Associates CPA used to be known as, uh, has, was in place for like 30 or 35, 40 years before that. So in total, wow. the business has been around over 70 years. Okay. So, and before that, the building we were in was a fire department. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, really cool. it's, it's yeah. been, it's been a good deal. So. so it's your dad, you, and then you have a brother, right? Yeah. And it's the three of you who are in business together? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And there's a couple others up and coming. Um, uh, we went to, uh, Joey and I went to high school with Josiah Wolf, who's also um, an up and coming CPA. And then um, there's several other people in the firm that make it all go that we couldn't do it without them. So, yeah. um, you know, we're, we're really glad that everybody's there. And, um, but yes, Joey, Josiah, myself, and my father, um, it's kind of interesting how the firm has transformed in the last couple of years, because for most of my father's career, he was the only guy there with a license. Right. And then up and coming, we're going to have uh, four here really quick. And then, you know, up, oh, you know, nice. Yeah. You know, who knows where we'll go after that? It's really exciting. Spread the workload a little bit so you guys aren't all. Yeah. Your poor yeah. dad, how long was he doing that for without any help? Well. That's a long time. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> up until recently, I mean, yeah. So he's been doing something. And you know, I think we did 
close to 1200 returns last year and he reviewed them all so yeah you know i mean busy man he keeps it together yeah uh, absolutely and the goal is you know we put a new we put an article in the newspaper talking about our uh, well he put an article in the newspaper a couple years ago talking about his retirement plan and all of us were in that article or whatever but um uh, he is not looking to just disappear. So if yeah. those folks in Eaton Rapids that are worried about John Van Adder disappearing, he's not going to – he's just going to work less. That's the goal. Yeah. You know, retirement. Know. Yeah, right? retirement. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's the goal behind it. Yeah, but absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When you're a busy, busy workman, I don't, I don't know if you can ever fully step away. Right. That's I – mean, my family is the same way. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is there's, there's, I mean, he is the owner, so there's real ownership there, obviously. You know, we talk a lot about that in culture and college. They talked about as as you develop a leader, you take ownership, but well, he's, he's the owner, you know, it's like, it's it's a real thing and he takes it very seriously. And so the the likelihood of him ever, you know, I mean, it's kind of like a pastor that's been there for 50 years. You know, you don't, you don't just leave. Usually those guys get carried out in a coffin. So, you know, it's like, you know, and it's his ministry too. So that's another thing. So, okay. Yeah. Nice. So that's you guys awesome. are located in Eaton Rapids. Mm-hmm. Have you guys always been in Eaton Rapids? Uh, we had a brief stint in Olivet where we had a satellite office there, but okay. um, that didn't work out for a couple of reasons. Um, but yeah, the main office has been in Eaton Rapids for forever. And as we go forward, COVID specifically issued uh, several changes in our office specifically. It impacted everybody, but right. specific changes in our office, we've been able to offer online services now. So people can send us stuff and, you know, talk on the phone or Zoom call or whatever it is, you know, a lot of modernization has happened so that we can deal with clients wherever they're at, you know. So That's awesome. geographically constricted accounting services is a thing of the past, even for small businesses like ourselves, you know. Yeah. Previously, you know, two years ago, three years ago, we personally would have thought those types of things were unavailable to us. You know, you'd hear about that, like the big firms, you know, Plant Moran and um, PwC and all these other places, they could do that stuff. But, I mean, we don't have the money to support that type of IT infrastructure, but it's becoming very accessible for us now, and uh, we're glad to be able to provide those types of services. That's awesome. So you guys can have clients locally, and if they moved away, they can still be your client. Oh, yeah, 100%. Very easy, too. I mean, yeah, it's no no trick at all these days, you know, and and it's all about security. Everything's about security these days, and the people that we work with to provide the services we do are really concerned about that. And so our software companies are interested in increasing that security, Um, you know, everything from our – uh, email provider to uh, the the IT manager that puts everything together. It's all about security. And so now we have been able to create a system that we're comfortable with the security level to offer those outside services so people can send us secure uh, information, not worried about you know someone t- reading their W-2 or whatever or losing right. their 1040 in the mail or something like that, which happened a lot last year. Mailing oh, yeah. 1040s out for people to sign or whatever is – thing in the past yeah so yeah no it's it's an exciting it's an exciting time to be an up-and-coming accountant which is kind of a weird thing to say (laughs) who wants to be an up-and-coming accountant but I am that's where I find myself so (laughs) did you when you were younger Jacob did you want to be this when you grew up um you know from like a young age like yes I'm going to follow my dad's footsteps this is what I'm going to do so it's that's an interesting question because um I mean the short answer is no I mean who yeah it's like Five-year-old Jacob, I'm well, going to be an accountant. Yeah, right. Like you're, you know, you're sitting in the, um, you know, you're sitting in the kindergarten classroom and all the pictures of all the people, you know, you got the firemen, the policemen, or right. whatever. And then yeah. on the very end, you've got the weird guy with the green visor and the black sleeve. And you're like, oh, I want to be that guy. You know, like, <laughs> no, I mean, no, of course not. But what happened was, is as I considered, you know, throughout my educational career, all the things I could yeah. be, you know, um, I'm good with my hands. So I thought, well, engineer or doctor makes sense with that or I like to teach, so like maybe professor or, or minister or you know something like that. It's, it's things I'm passionate about. Yeah. Um, and the question from my father was always, "You can do whatever you want." There was never any handcuffs, which I really appreciated about his leadership style. Um, but consider the trajectory of your life, and consider what this business might. Well, consider what this business has done for me, and in, mm-hmm. and indirectly for you, and what it might do for you in the future. And yeah. uh, and so, I mean, that's a whole lot of consideration. So, um, but it ended up that both my brother and I decided that this was the best trajectory to walk down. And I think it's the best way that we've been able to serve the people that we'd like to serve. We were raised this way. You know, we were raised talking about yeah. 
finances and tax and, and, and how to combine financial knowledge with a concern for the c- customer. Um, you know, take care of the take care of the people and the money will take care of itself. You know, the stuff, you know, just nuggets like that from the master accountant we grew up with, right? My father. And yeah. so it became very natural to follow that track. And I, you know, um, one of the things I've been asked is like, would you, would you change? Would you go in another direction if you, if you knew what you knew now or knew then what you knew now? And, uh, and I, I don't really think I would. Um, I've considered a lot of things, spent a lot of time thinking about, is this the way that I want to go? And I, I really believe yeah. it is. Nice. So. Yeah, and it's awesome that you guys are a family business too. That yeah. you're just keeping, I bet your dad's proud of that. Yeah, he is. And yeah. uh, I mean, sometimes a little bit much. He, you know, he, he beams <laughs> and you can see the rays coming through his office. So it's like, you know, <laughs> I mean, he, he's really happy that we're all there and we have, yeah. a good, we have a good rapport and, you know, but, you know, don't. You know, don't get the wrong impression. Sometimes working with family isn't the easiest thing, you know, yes, but yeah. we do have a good time doing it. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I like Did it. you get any advice from your dad when you let him know that this is the path you're going to go on? Did he ever give you any advice that stuck with you? Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, innumerable. I mean, I'm formed by all right. of the things that, you know, so it's hard to point out just one thing because most mm-hmm. of the words that flow through my mind are, and one way or another connected to the, you know, to, to the many canned speeches that my dad, yeah, that's the other thing. Um, it's, it's interesting because <laughs> you'll have like, uh, like five clients in a day or six, well, I guess during tax season, you might have as many as eight, but, um, you know, so all of us are sitting in our offices or whatever, listening to my dad do his discourse. And it's funny because he'll have the same conversation eight times in a day. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll pull off one of his cans off the shelf and that's what he's talking about today. You know, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so being his son, you know, you you, you, you get inundated with that type of material. Um, but it, what it is, is it's an ability and, and a discourse to, to, to connect with the people that we're serving. Right. Mm-hmm. Accounting is much less about the numbers, and it is so much more about the care and concern we um, portray towards the clients. We really do care that either their personal lives or their business, whatever we're involved with, we really want them to do well. We, we really, you know, and, and because if they don't, you know, and it's somehow reflective upon us, well, that's not going to be good for us either. So, like, right. as a fiduciary, which is which means that before any fees or any compensation comes our way, we're first concerned with the well-being of the client. Okay. Right? And so, um, and, and, and so again, take care of the people and the money will take care of itself. That's, that's, that is probably more than anything as I enter the business world, and I'm 24 years old. So I, I mean, I've got a long way to go, but as I enter the business world, that more than anything else changes how I view my work, right? Cause it isn't about making more money. Now, when I considered which profession I went to, obviously that was a consideration. The trajectory I'm talking about is a financial trajectory. It's a great way to go. But it's how we treat people. It's how we interact with people and mm-hmm. how we take care of the people that we do come in contact with. Yeah, clients. and I think that's very true in all business. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, you take care of your clients and the money will then follow. Yeah, right. It, it's, you know, first serve, then mm-hmm. be compensated, not look for compensation first. You know? Right. But yeah, that, that, all that stuff came from my, of course, affirmed by all the other business leaders that I read about in college and whatnot. I'm like, so I learned that my dad wasn't an idiot. Yay. You know, but you know, um, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about because all these other people confirm it. But other than that, um, I mean, everything is steeped in the information that my father grew up. And that's, that's probably why I'm a little bit biased when I did make the decision. I did what, what career, you know, because yeah. he had first pick on what advice I listened to because I listened to him, you know. Right. But um, it's turned out well. I think. Yeah. So That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So as we get into the tax season, what should somebody, what is one thing that someone should prepare for before getting to that? Yeah. Or like coming to see us? Yeah. yeah. How does how do someone prepare to come to see you? Okay. So there's, it, well, it really depends on what that person is doing, right? So um, it in complexity, it goes from a W-2 employee to a thriving business owner, right? I mean, and you know, and there can be a whole bunch of things in between that. Um, if a person sold their house, if a person uh, worked for uh, another person for a short period of time, if uh, someone has some investments, if they're new into Bitcoin, if they're, you know, anytime uh, there has a chance that there's a gain or there's some type of income available, we need to know about it. Whether it's cash or check or whatever, 
you know, there, there is a common misnomer that if someone um, receives some type of payment um, via, via just cash and there's no reporting done, that that doesn't need to be reported to the IRS. Well, I mean, is the IRS going to know about it? No. Like, there's no way for, there's no reporting, underlying reporting for that. But, I mean, the IRS clearly states that that is reportable income. Any income you receive is reportable income. Um, and so for someone to sit and tell us that they, you know, anyway, so that's, that's a whole other thing, <laughs> but you know, so just, you know, either don't tell me or whatever, but in, in your, in your preparation, you know it, though, yeah, right. It's, to it's, it. it's tough, right? So that's, that's a situation we often find ourselves in as, as preparers. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I made $4,000 this year babysitting. I was paid in cash. It's like, why did you tell me that? You know, but you know, that type of thing, but preparing, you know, collecting K-1s, collecting W-2s, collecting 1099s, either from the bank or from your investments or whatever, all that. A, a lot of times people collect those in just a big folder and they'll either send them to us in the mail or they'll email all the documents that they got from various institutions. It's really great nowadays because most of those we call them matching documents because anytime you receive a 1099, a W-2, uh, or any other type of, um, type of form you get to report income, there's two documents. One gets sent to the IRS directly and one gets sent to you. And the IRS wants you to take all those documents and compile them on a, on a 1040, your, your uh, tax return, and then send it to the IRS. And then the IRS takes all the documents they've already received, compares it to your uh, 1040, mm -hmm. and then says, oh, it's all there, or oh, you're missing something, you know? And then you get the letter and then it's, okay, yeah. now you have to come back and see me and we, you know, and all sorts of stuff. So, um, keeping track of the income that flows to you and then the documentation related to that income is really important because, um, you know, a lot of the time someone might think that, well, this wasn't reportable or this is reportable or whatever. It's like best practice, send it all to me yes. and I'll help you figure out what is and what is not necessary for your tax return. The question, send it in. Yeah, right. Exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. Absolutely. You know, that's, Awesome. In preparation, that's def and then for you know for business owners, especially a lot of people were at home, you know, o over the last year or whatever, and they were trying to figure out what they're going to do with their time or whatever, and they decided to sell something on eBay or you know do you know create cr a craft company or you know start doing whatever it is those you know shipped businesses. That's a big thing nowadays. You know, the going yeah. to shop for people who don't want to go shopping because of whatever. Um, you know, that's that's a whole other you know, cavity worms and whatnot, and I'd be more than glad to help you walk those things. But there's more complicated than most people realize. So, yeah. That's awesome. I like it. So how can people get a hold of you guys? Um, so you can either give us a call. That's 517-663-4204 or visit our website, vanadderaccounting.com. Sweet. Hey, thanks. Thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Are these working? All right. Yes, sir. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think that works. Should we tell oh, him? Uh, mine keeps falling. It doesn't what, like my voice. What do we got to tell him? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we, do we got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button like. It might be, um, it might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. <laughs>